Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In Psalm 87 and verse 3, Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. The male quartet come to sing those familiar lines, Glorious things of thee are spoken. Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the scriptures, God's holy word, in order to find the answers. Question number one. In Romans chapter four, verses seven and eight, is there a difference between the statements which Paul makes there? Seven and eight read, blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven. That's one statement whose sins have been covered. So lawless deeds and sins. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. Paul is quoting David in Psalm 32 verses one and two. And you need to understand a literary device which was very common in Hebrew poetry as in other forms of expression that a statement would be made and then it would be re-expressed. And this takes place through Psalms and into Proverbs and other parts of the poetical literature of the Old Testament. The statement is made and then there is in order to, as it were, underline or to bold print that statement and to emphasize it as carefully and, and pointedly, powerfully as possible, there is a repeating in a slightly various form. Now, you would need a pretty sharp uh, dictionary or a pretty sharp knife, uh, dictionary knife, in order to come up with the difference between the one and the other. The, the desire or the direction which is being pushed in these lines is simply the very one and the same thing. The lawless deeds, the transgressions, the sin, call it whatever you will, that which is displeasing in the sight of the Lord, that will be forgiven, that will be covered, that will be not taken into account. And so this is what the thrust of this verse is. And so I would not take it that there is a sharp difference between the one statement 
and the next. Question number two, how does faith to live by work? Now, what the questioner is really asking, faith to live by, you give away your materials and you don't plead for money and there's no, there's no mailing list in the customary way. Once a year you send out a calendar and we appreciate that, but how do the bills get paid? The uh, airtime costs an enormous amount. We are now, uh, Faith to Live By is now on more television and radio stations than ever before, covering more of Canada in various ways. How does it all work? that this take place? Is there some deep pockets? Is there an organization? Is there a church that is behind this? No, there is no funding agency. We simply go with Matthew chapter 10 and verses seven and eight. Jesus, as he was sending out his disciples for a practicum, for an apprenticeship or an internship, call it whatever you wish, he was sending them out in pairs of two in order to preach and to work miracles. He says to them, as you go, preach, that's our marching orders, we are to proclaim through the proclamation of God's word, and we are to say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I trust that through the ministry of faith to live by, you sense that there is an urgency, that there is a not, not, a, a not time that's forever to be on our hands. There is an urgency to what we do. So preach, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. We are dealing with spiritual realities of those who are sick in sin, those who are dead in their trespasses, those who are filthy in their sins, in leprosy, as it were, in the ancient world, and those who have even dabbled in the things of the devil so that they are immersed in the demonic realm. And Jesus says, freely you received, freely give. There are people all across Canada in large ways and small, some very small and how we appreciate that, they give in order that faith to live by might continue on. Some give a little more generously. Some write in, call in, and they say, I don't have anything to give. May I still have the resource that you have? I love faith to live by and I appreciate it. And the answer is absolutely. And so it is simply the matter of we have received freely and we freely give. We also believe that there are so many of you who understand, you've raised a family, you've, you've done things in your life, you know that things cost money, and so we don't think that we need to badger you or to clout you over the head and to constantly remind you of what you know. And so it is a trust factor. We preach the word of God believing that God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. And if, and this is, no, this is not a threat, this is by no means a threat, the bills are paid, the, the, the funds are there to take care of things, that when, when in God's timing, he says, okay, the funds that I would have directed to faith to live by will direct to someplace else, that we'll say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. And we will graciously seek to accept this from your hand as what you would have us to do and in your timing. So how does faith to live by work? It works simply by trusting that the Lord is in control and that he is watching over his own he has and he is providing for us so much so that we are able to encourage other ministries and missions from time to time. And we thank God for that. And we thank each of you who stand with us and help us. But indeed, freely we have received of God's grace and freely we give that and pass it on to others. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 
Heidi and Tim team up singing, My Song Shall Be of Jesus, and then Jan, Lois, and Rick sing, Looking in the Face of Jesus. Song shall be of Jesus while 
Permit me to say a word about Faith to Live By resources. Each month or so, we emphasize or highlight a new CD or a new book or perhaps a reprint. I want you to know that as best as we are able, should you recall something that we have highlighted in the past months or years, we have a small supply of those materials, whether it's a book or CD, and would be happy to send it to you, and so do ask for that which you recall. I also want to highlight to you our newest CD, Till the Storm Passes By, songs which will be a great blessing to your heart. You may ask for your free CD when you write to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6, or call us toll free 1 833 367 3852, or use our website faithtoliveby.ca. Till the storm passes by, some have described it as our finest CD music production to this point, and that blesses our heart, and may it be a rich blessing in your heart and in your home. Now, just before the message, Rick and Matt Bowring come singing, Hallelujah, Praise the Lamb. Just the other day, I was speaking with someone on the phone, and they were saying, Pastor, how do I speak to someone who has it in their thoughts? I need to come to God through an intermediary, some saint, some leader, someone. And I said, consider what took place in the Gospels. 
Jesus as he met with the Syrophoenician woman. The disciples wanted to send her away. Think of the mothers of Salem. The disciples wanted to send them away as well. Think of the crowds, the disciples, when it was convenient or inconvenient, they wanted to send them away. But Jesus, he bid people to come to him. He met with Mary and Martha. He met with Mary Magdalene, the, the sinner. He, he met and he welcomed into his presence the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. He welcomed Nicodemus in the middle of the night. Constantly, Jesus was bidding people to come to him. Even the leprous, even the lepers, he bid them to come and find in him cleansing. He calls Bartimaeus in Jericho to come to him as he is crying out and everyone else is telling him to shut up. You're embarrassing us. You're causing Jesus to remember Jericho by means of a blind beggar who is making such a ruckus. Would you please close your mouth? But Jesus, he bid Bartimaeus to come to him. He bid Zac Zacchaeus to come to him. Again and again, Jesus, he bid people to come. Hear now what we read in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. It's an altar call. It is God speaking to us. He is bidding us to come to him. He is bidding us to lay ourselves upon the altar and to surrender our lives and our pursuits. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus did not say, now come to Peter and he'll be the gatekeeper, or come to John and James, Andrew, Matthew. He's, he's dealt with lineups before at his tax table. He's the perfect guy to keep you all in an orderly fashion. Jesus said nothing of the sort. He said, come to me, come to me. To me. When you present your requests, come to Jesus. Come to him and make your requests known. Cast all your cares upon him, knowing that he cares for you. But I also want to take you from Matthew and chapter 11, what Jesus speaks there, to the very conclusion of the New Testament and the conclusion of the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 22, where this four-letter word, usually we think of four-letter words as off-limits, but here is a four-letter word that is glorious. It is the most wonderful word, and it is that word, come. And it is repeated again and again. And when we find repetition in the scriptures, you need to think emphasis. Think that here is God taking out his yellow highlighter and he is using bold text and he is pushing it to us to pay attention. Here, God is saying, would you hear this word that I am speaking to you as loudly and as clearly as you possibly can? That glorious word, come. In verse 17 of Revelation 22, the spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, come. Let the one who wishes take the water of life without cost. And John, he comes to the conclusion, the last two verses, he who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming quickly. Who testifies? Jesus Christ himself testifies that even as he has gone away into heaven, he has revealed these things to John, he has revealed what is to come, and that he is coming quickly. 
The believers in the first century did not see the book of Revelation as a horrible book or a book of monsters, a book of, of horrors that we should fall in trepidation under. It was a book of hope. It was a book where it describes that Jesus Christ is the victor and the devil is a defeated foe. I think that we today ought to grab a hold of that same truth that the devil is a defeated foe and Jesus says, I am coming and I am coming quickly. And the response, the response that John gives is amen. And that means indeed. It means let it be. Come, Lord Jesus. Is that your heart? Is that the response that naturally comes out of you? Even so, come, Lord Jesus. If you are walking with Christ, having laid your sins at the cross, knowing that he has covered it with your, his blood, then you can, with glad heart, say, even so, come, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will come to the cross and that you will surrender yourself and know his life in you today. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 